So when I come to visit Keith here at the Royal Society, I'm not required to sign a visitor's book or anything like that. But in days gone by, or even now if you're important enough, you do sign a visitor's book at the Royal Society. And today, we're going to talk about that. We're going to show you a bunch of interesting visitor's books. Isn't that right? Sorry, Brad, you mean you don't sign in? Oh, no, kidding. <laughs> I, probably, I probably should sign in, but anyway, that's okay. They know me at the front door now. They do, yes. Keith, we've got a whole bunch of things. And mm. the first thing we want to talk about are strangers. So the Royal Society traditionally was always a private gathering of fellows. So the meetings would be closed. That's where the science was written about and, and read. And therefore, if you wanted to come and hear a scientific paper, you would have to be introduced by a fellow. But if you weren't a fellow, you had to sign in because you're a stranger. Mm. Let's have a look at these stranger books here. Yeah, here's the earliest lists of visitors, strangers, and they begin in 1783. There's the front page. Lists of visitors to the meetings of the society, November 1783 to June 1788. That's when Australia started, 1788. Yeah, so this is a good period for spotting people associated with Joseph Banks, and there's probably one or two in here. So we have all these pages, and it seems to be on the left we have the strangers. Absolutely. And then here, the other side of this little brackety thing, I don't know what I'm supposed to call that we have the fellow that signed in the strangers. That's correct, yes. Okay. So here's Monsieur Tremblay. This could be Abraham Tremblay, who did Hydra experiments, I think. And right at the bottom here, we have a certain Joseph Priestley. Surely Joseph Priestley was a fellow of the well, Royal he, he must have been. Yes, he was. Maybe it should say doctor, I think, if it's uh, the Joseph Priestley. Some people are just casual visitors. Some people are, are overseas visitors. And going to the Royal Society would be something that you would do if you were passing through London. So we're into the 19th century now. Let's get someone better. Ah, here we go. Mr. John Ruskin. So Ackland the Fellow. And Simon, his friend, have introduced Mr. John Ruskin, who is, of course, the, the famous artist and art critic associated with the Pre-Raphaelites, but a really big figure in Victorian England. So he's come to see a paper in 1862. So we've got John Ruskin, who Keith is very excited about. I, I didn't know quite so much about him, but I, know, <laughs> but I know he's a big deal. Figures like Ruskin would come if the paper was particularly interesting to them. And there's a little bit of a clue about what this one was. When you see just here, quite a lot of audiences being signed in by Mr. Delarue. Oh yeah, so whoever Delarue is here has got a whole bunch of people. He's obviously said, oh, I've got something awesome. You've all got to come along. So they've all come along to see what Delarue's doing. Let's have a look at the paper. So this is the philosophical transactions and manuscripts of the period. So when papers were read, they would then be polished up for publication in the philosophical transactions, and Delarue's paper was certainly one of those. So here we have it. And the title here is On the Total Solar Eclipse of July 18th, 1860, observed at, here comes Keith, Riva Bellarisa, near Miranda de Ebro in Spain. It's a solar eclipse, and you can yeah. see why maybe an artist would be interested in a solar eclipse. They're quite Absolutely. beautiful things, aren't they? They are. This would, have been, this would have been a long evening. Oh my goodness. It's a huge paper. Here's a picture telling you 140 pages of words. Look at that. I can't Great. believe it. You can see the prominences here. They're fantastic, It's aren't amazing. They? That's like almost as good as modern pictures of eclipses. Mm, yeah. Fantastic pictures. We also have these watercolours that have been done. These are gorgeous. And also these convey the colour that was being seen at the time. Exactly right. So not just a straight black and white, but you can see the gradations of colour from the sun here and uh, these prominences, which are really beautifully done. Here's some more of them on the screen for you all to look at because these are, these are delicious. Anyway, now we know why Ruskin was there. But we'll show you, just give you a bit more of a flavour of what's in these books as the years go by. So we're just in the back end of the 19th century now and going into the 20th century. Ah, women. Women are beginning to appear. So this is Arthur Schuster, who we, we know, secretary of the Royal Society at one point, And he has his family here, including Miss Schuster, the daughter, presumably. So at this time, the Royal Society is such a male-dominated thing mm. that you're surprised to see women even yep. coming to a meeting just to listen to a lecture. Well, or... the first woman was proposed, Hertha Ayrton, in 1902. So this is before that. So this is, this is early days. Yep. I like this here because we can see someone here has put their little business card in there instead. So that's a bit like, I was here and, you know, if you want your windows done, give me a call. There still are visitors' books today. Here is one such book. You can see there on the spine, Visitors to the Royal Society. Sharpen my pencil, Keith. Maybe I should sign yeah, this one. Yeah, well, we've hidden the pens, Brady. Okay, there we go. 
1991 this book starts and you kind of never know what you're going to find. It's very often visiting foreign delegations. So they'd be academicians from other societies. We have the Estonian Academy of Sciences here. So there's like just a dinner for research professors here in January 1992. And look, they've all signed yeah, it. So, yeah, yeah. oh, I know Steve Howell. He's a chemist at the University of Nottingham. There we go. <laughs> so there you go. You never know who you're going to find. Here's Paul Nurse. Oh, Paul Nurse was there too. The former president of the Royal Society. The planning meeting of Population Conference, Stockholm 1993, had a bit of an ink incident, I'm afraid. Mm. Never mind. So some of these are just visitors by one person and they get a whole mm, page to themselves. Yeah. yeah. Keith? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know my place. Anyway, you get the picture, but let's up the ante even further and go to the Uber VIP book. One what? Uber VIP book? You can definitely bet Keith's not going to let me sign this one. Who do you have to be to get into this book? Uh, well, it helps if you're uh, a royal, because we are, of course, a royal society. Okay. So you'll find uh, quite a few royal patrons and royal fellows in there. Let's have a look then. So this is the presentation of the King Charles II medal to His Majesty the Emperor of Japan. Well, so look there, we've got a signature by my thumb there. We have a signature of the Emperor of Japan. Didn't leave him much room, did they? They didn't actually, no. <laughs> Had to squeeze that one in. Queen Mother, 100th birthday. She has the exact same signature as her daughter, the Queen, mm. doesn't she? And if you don't believe me, <laughs> there's the Queen and Prince, Prince Philip. Philip. Yeah. I mean, the Queen's signature is a dime a dozen around here because she's your patron. She's comes a patron, here. Yeah. yes, absolutely. Angela Merkel, Her Excellency, the Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany. 2010, do you remember? Do you yeah, remember? I remember that. Premier of China, Prince Wen Jiabao. Oh, there we go. Great signature, absolutely fantastic. That's a calligraphy. cracking signature. You're not forging that bad boy. Now, these are, these are amazing and fantastic, but we've got one more kind of visitor's book we want to show you that's a little bit out of left field. And to see that, we're going to go down here. Let's walk. Now, Keith, this says visitor's book, but mm. this is not a book, obviously. This is a piece of hardboard. <laughs> and this, as you can see from these holes that are screwed here, this was once upon a time attached to a wall. And visitors to this place where this board was then signed it. And then in later years, it's found its way here to the Royal Society archives. What mm. is this, Keith? Where's this come from? Well, this came from the Royal Society station at Halley Bay for International Geophysical Year in 57, 59. So this was in Antarctica, in the hut. And visitors, and they would have been few and far between, presumably, would have signed this as they passed by. So this was kind of like a Royal Society funded team of scientists. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Down in Antarctica. Yep. I don't know who Pinguino Kismoso was here is, but we obviously refers to this penguin. As you would expect, there are lots of visiting US Navy ships because, of course, very few people can, can jolly up to Antarctica in a yacht or anything like that. So it's mostly naval people. Yep. A lot of scientists uh, and, and people who were involved in expeditions, but also some, some left field people, as you say. So here we have someone from Walt Disney. So that says Bill Fortin, Walt Disney, and a little bit of research that we've done since, it turns out that he was a cinematographer of a mm -hmm. short documentary about people working in this part of the world that actually won the Academy Award yeah. back in the day. So. so no pressure, James. We also have Vivian Fuchs, British explorer, who in 1957-58 crossed Antarctica by land with tractors, I believe. Like Yeah, sort of. so it was a big uh, expedition, but a trans-Antarctic thing is a big deal. And here he is uh, preparing for the expedition. So we have visits in 56, where it's been signed, but we also have January 57, which I think might have been around the time they were kicking off the actual trip. So there's a little bit of history in the making there on this board. Yeah. From old visitors' books of strangers through to... VIPs through to royalty and then all the way to Antarctica. We have you covered for visitors books mm -hmm. at the Royal Society yep. and I've signed none of them. You're not a stranger. Oh, that's quite nice. Yeah. The first women were elected as fellows in 1945. Uh, so that's only another 20 years. Yeah, I, I took another world war. Progress is there slow. Progress is slow. But Kathleen Lonsdale and Marjorie yeah. Stevenson became the first two women fellows of the Royal Society. And when you consider, particularly that the kind of contributions that women had uh, made to the war effort, uh, it is remarkable that they waited yeah. that long. 